합추 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 Jeez Louise, man. <sighs> well, this has been a bit of a tough month. Got back from my work trip. Mother-in-law drove the car and then properly toasted the clutch. There we go. I don't have a pickle or fork or whatever, but I was able to wedge this guy right in there. Uh, but hit it, rotate it, hit it, rotate it, hit it, rotate it. There we go. One, two, three, and it, and it moves. I didn't get it on camera, but it, it that, that popped out by hand. That was no problem. There. All right, we're just going to leave that there.
as I removed the bolts, I just labeled them with numbers and then it helped me keep track of where they went and it ended up being easier than sticking them in cardboard and then losing the cardboard or it got wet. It was just easier this way. Apparently the Mazda 3, I think has a different exhaust manifold bracket mounting system because other people have to remove some things. Whereas in this Mazda 5, I had no problems getting these two bolts out. I was able to get them out by hand, no problem. All right. Oh, God, asbestos. Just kind of hanging up on the subframe. A little bit, but once I tilt it forward, it'll be fine. For the pilot bearing, it's smooth, nothing caught my fingernail. Look at that. My buddy, who's a machinist at a shop, he says that's likely part of the manufacturing process. They just heat treat that. I did not replace this. Eh, whatever. Need some grease in there. Oh, my God. Look at that groove. That shit is polished. Proper toast. Oh shit, that thing was really just kind of floating in there. All right, now here's the back side.
the clutch release. I had to grind down the tool. I didn't have room behind the bearing and I needed to grind it to get it slim enough to wedge in that rubber portion of the pilot bearing. Man. <sighs> <sighs> okay, now it's going in. What you're seeing dripping around the rear main seal is brake clean from cleaning the threads. It is not actually leaking. It was bone dry. And my philosophy is just don't touch it. Nothing was leaking, so I'm leaving it alone. So I'm showing these, they're called tangential leaf springs, and they are designed to pull the pressure plate into the springs that your clutch pushes into. It, it essentially pulls back. And I had a project with my BMW where I had two bad pressure plates. This was the symptom I had. It was very, difficult to almost impossible to getting it into gear. When I got the correct pressure plate, obviously it worked. It took literally getting an updated part number of the exact same part from a catalog from five years newer to get a part that worked because I kept getting ones that were bad with a certain part number. This is something that I learned on how to check if a pressure plate is good or not. All of those springs should be super, super tight.
There were three things wrong with these Mavotech Supreme control arms. Note these are the Supreme versions, not the regular versions. First was one of the bolts, the big front bolt, clearly didn't match. The rear two bolts did. I, however, just reused the original Mazda bolts. Second was you needed to clamp the back end in the vise to bend this mount because out of the box the two rear bolts cannot thread in by themselves and it will cross thread. I almost did that. The third thing wrong on the passenger side was the Zerker grease fitting would not take grease. So I'm going to inspect that later. Uh, kind of, yeah, some mediocre welds right there. Um, let's see the weld on the other side. Okay, a little, little better on that side. Um, I have daily driven these already for almost two months as a daily driver. I have not had any swimming or clunking or any issues that I know of yet. Once the front drive train and crank position sensor was connected, I did a start of the engine and made sure there weren't any abnormal vibrations. And so far in neutral, the clutch is doing its job and is not dragging. As I was ratcheting the lower control arms, I made sure the sway bar was contacting on the metal and not on the ball joints. I didn't want to spend more time removing more parts, so I just kind of forced it down. <sighs> Fuck, dude, just stay there. Dude, let me just stay there. But you need a ratcheting wrench to clear the bolt because of the exhaust hanger. And you gotta be careful not to go too far, otherwise you're gonna be in a world of hurt. So you got to do it third of a turn at a time near the end. Right now what I'm doing is making sure these adjustable control arms are the same length. I did not make them the same length by just shoving the bolt in there because I had a discrepancy of a couple millimeters and that is because the bushings while they rotate they flex and they've settled into their position so the distance is not the same I wanted to get it as close as possible for the alignment guy to start with so I'm measuring it based on the diameter outer diameter of the bushing I bought these cheap set of wrenches 
they were very slim and very small and they worked perfectly. John, who is my neighbor who did the alignment, was glad to have those. So definitely get these if you're going to get those adjustable rear control arms. Just hit the brake caliper. All right, here we go. Wow, that is a really light clutch pedal. Oh, that is very grabby. Nice. All right, nice. Okay, I found the click. That is not tightened down all the way. The video doesn't really show justice of the annoying weather problems I was having during this job. We had so much rain, so much wind, and so much snow, and there were some days that were so cold that I said I just wasn't going to work outside today. I was lazy on some days putting plastic garbage bags over exposed areas like the transmission and the brakes, and I would come home from a job after it had rained all day and water got in the transmission. So I had to drain the transmission twice. And then here's another situation where the brake pad seized onto the rotors and that was just another 80 bucks, 100 bucks that just added an annoying thing to the job where I was constantly waiting. The plastic bags that I rigged up would get blown away because I didn't clamp them on there. Parts would get rained on and everything just started rusting left and right. Suddenly adding more and more prep because now I gotta scrape the rust off of all this stuff. I had done a big order with MazdaPartsFactor.com and they shipped out of New Hampshire, which gave me really good prices, but they messed up the order and only ordered three flywheel bolts and three pressure plate bolts. And like the dumbass I was, I didn't check all the packaging and it took so long for them to get the bolts out. I ended up going to the dealer anyways to have them get bolts the next day. And in that annoying back and forth, it's turned into a thing where it's like, okay, well, I got to wait for all this shit. I might as well overhaul all the suspension and get new stuff for the rear, like the adjustable SPC control arms. So a clutch job ended up turning into a whole suspension job and brake job.